It's not great that there's a white hand scooping up black kids. It's not racist, because it's my hand. When I roll up, look at hella fine. My credit score can't be that bad. The basic credit tiers are excellent, good, poor, bad. It's easy. It's all the way at the bottom. You know I hate to ask. Vanessa's not really cool with you being around, so maybe I could give you another week, but then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll see you. OK. But ain't nobody going to do it like you and like me. Oh, that's a hair. No! Issa Rae, and I'm joined by our showrunner, the brilliant Prentice Penny, for our wind downs this season. And I made him do it. <laughs> he can't escape. <laughs> Every week, we're going to be winding down to break down an episode. So we're excited for you guys to see it. Issa and I are joined by the one and only Yvonne Origi, Whoa. who plays Issa's BFF in crime, Molly. Crime? Um, in crime. A lot of crime happens, especially in the first episode. Some stuff goes down. So our premiere episode for season three is called Better Like. It starts off with Issa being demoted, living on Daniel's couch, and driving Liv part-time. Molly is also turning over a new leaf this year and setting some major boundaries with Dro. So how did you feel going into the Molly stories for this season? You know, I was excited in that scene where she's like, I need my boundaries, and Dro, this is it. I feel like she had that, that empowerment, because I don't think that that's not what Molly would do season one. Season one, she was thirsty. She was like, I want all the guys. Mm -hmm. um, and then season two was like, life is crappy. Let's mm -hmm. just try this thing. And then now I feel like she's like, hold on. I need to start taking mm -hmm. control. And I think now, like, especially with Drew, it was like, I'm this. I'm, yeah. I'm this new person. I need this to happen. And he's kind of like, wait, what? Where is this coming from? So I know that's one of the themes that we wanted to explore just in terms of knowing better, do better, which is what your character says. And it just feels like this season, our characters like have to know better. Do you feel like we did better? I think this first episode, you know, the party lift really, really was an attempt to like, hey, let me just figure out what to do. I'm, I need to be out here making money anyway. Let me call my girl Molly and get this party lift right. started. Whether that was the cover or not, I think we realized yeah. in the end it was, but it was fun while it lasted. Remember, I think when we left Malibu, it was like, I don't know how to be this new better me, but yeah. we gonna figure it out. And you were like, well, I'll just be there with you. And I think that's what we're doing. We're like right. really still trying to figure this thing out. I mean, that's adulting though too, which I think, you know, you kind of doing some childish things about not telling Daniel the truth and not being as honest as you can with Drew. Yeah. But at some point you have to take the hard stand. Yeah. And sometimes being an adult is doing things that are sometimes unpopular, but you know you have to do for the betterment of yourself. And yeah. I think both of your characters did that in the episode for sure. Like the honest truth about themselves. There's a thing of just like putting the honesty to the side mm. of just like for convenience. And I think with Molly's character, you said boundaries of vacation bay, you said boundaries at work. But with Jerome, he's your soft yeah. spot. And I think even with Issa confronting her own feelings about Daniel, yeah. you know? Now, one of the things we wanted to do was explore why does Issa like Daniel? You know, usually, like, Daniel's come in on our stories and he's kind of been this knight in shining armor, he's kind of been this perfect guy in some way. Like in the writer's room, all of us can say, why is she not with this dude? For this first episode, it's just he had to confront his own feelings about Issa and address it instead of being passive aggressive. Yeah. Um, we didn't really get a chance to get to know who Daniel is without the lens of Issa. So being able to explore his own insecurities yeah. and seeing Daniel's frustration with Issa in the past of just like, you're wishy-washy, girl. Like, you're telling me this one thing and you're telling me this other thing. So what is it? And forcing Issa to confront herself and, and being able to see what he's been going through to get to that point was just really compelling to us. He could be a little petty too, because I mean, he's clearly is having sex with other people in front of you. You know what I mean? It's like so it's weird. like, and it's also like seeing again, like this show is called Insecure, and it's yeah. nice to see every character on our show see what their insecurities are. And what I love too is that like we don't allow any character to be looked at as perfect, because like again, when Daniel is yeah. just the guy that Issa's with, it's kind of like, ooh, he's fine, and he a music executive. But then you see him like, you know, and when you live with somebody too, you oh see a God. different them. I mean, you know, it's like. It was just fun to kind of get into his head and get into his world in a lot of ways. Yeah. For this season, for all our characters, we just wanted to have a sense of, like, now that you know better, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with your choices moving forward? Um, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> so that's all we got, y'all. <laughs> See you next week. And until then, keep your lifts party free. <laughs>